So welcome to another war game review from theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander, and today we're taking a look at Target for Today, which is a uh, brand new game from Legion War Games. And this is a it's a solitaire only war game. Although I suppose you could play it somehow co-op in a giant campaign if you played everyone did different bombers and reported in the results that might you might be able to cool interesting story that way but primarily this is a solitaire war game um, it's I don't know if I'm allowed to say this but it's basically it's a remake um, but a much more expansive edition of the old Avalon Hills B-17 Queen of the Skies and in that game you would crew a bomber a B-17 flying for the 8th or the 15th Air Force doing bombing runs over um, Axis-controlled uh, mainland Europe. And so you would roll, you know, flying and doing navigating over the target, you'd be attacked by the Luftwaffe, and then it would be a case of trying to defend yourself, which would be pretty hairy, and then you'd roll bombing over the target to see how well you bombed. Uh, and, you know, your crew members would be affected, and then it would be trying to get your self safely home as well and this game is very much very very similar to that i mean it uses almost exactly the same basic core ideas but i know um that bob best and steve dixon who designed this game put a lot of research into it and they really made it so that you can make it as expansive as you want to and that's something I actually did an interview with them, which you can read on our website, playersaid.com, where they kind of went through some of the steps they went through in designing the game and how much research went into it. And you can tell just from looking through the game, there's an unboxing video you can watch that we shot just going through the, the mountains of stuff in here. But really, as much stuff as there is, the game is very, very simple. It plays um, quickly and easily, and... What I love about this game, and I, this is people who love Queen of the Skies will tell you, it's the great storyline that this tells. And that's what I look for in a solitaire war game. I want to be engaged with what's happening, and I'd like that to be realistic, and I can almost put myself in the position that some of these crew members were in, and the things they went through, and it makes you... You know, when a terrible things happen, or you know, the triumphant, you know, very lucky things happen, you feel that. You feel that in this game, even though it can, it, you know, there's a lot of dice rolling. It's going through some charts and tables. You know, when the, when things happen or you can avoid bad things, it feels great, and that's something that I really, really enjoyed about this this particular game. Um, it's a big box, and, and I don't want to go through all the different components, but I can tell you that what makes this game cool is the detail. And you can make the game more or less detailed if you want. By there's you know there's a lot of optional rules that you can skip over, and it's just you know you don't lose anything necessarily. But if you want to go through really cool historical campaigns, they've got the the target gazetteer, which is huge by the way, organized into time periods, the the focused objectives of the various. Um, Air Forces, you know, the, t the types of targets they were going for affects the probabilities that you would go through of getting those kind of targets. And then each target, you know, what they did is they, they kind of plotted and went through all the different things that happened on the real missions going to those targets. And, and, and you go through different kind of zones, which represents the stages of your flight towards and from the target. And each of those zones then has a... Um, a kind of a modifier for the level of German resistance or the weather, things like that. There's so much in here to to kind of really bring it to life and make each mission feel different. And that's the one thing with a game like this that you might worry about, where you're just kind of doing the same thing over and over again. I'm moving along the zones, bomb the target, shoot some planes down. I don't feel that way. I don't feel that way at all. Um, this this game makes me it makes me feel like uh, I'm taking part in the movie The Memphis Bell. And that's what you want, right? That's why you want to play a game like this to give you that great storyline, those great feelings. You know, when they announced in that movie that they were going back to Bremen, just the ashen face looks, because they knew that was not a cake run. 
And that's the case here, you know, you, you roll at that target list and you get somewhere, you know, that's deep in the heart of the Ruger beat and you know it's going to be so well defended and there's going to be tons of flank and, and wave after wave of en enemies attacking you. you. You know you're just going to be up against it as opposed to, I think the first game I played it was just a target against um, a shipping yard in Rotterdam. So it was on the coast, you're flying over the English Channel, nice and easy, most of that's controlled by um, the RAF anyway. Uh, after the Battle of Britain, and you know, so the first few zones were nice and easy, then there was some fighting, moved back, and it was a quick short mission. It's not one of the long ones go deep into the heart of Germany where things are going to get kind of scary. So each mission really does have a different flavor to it, has different bits and pieces, even though you know a lot of it's rolling on the same charts and tables, the results are so um, historically... Um, accurate and well researched that it gives you great feeling every time you fly missions different every time so that's something that I really really enjoyed about this um, and, and, and I didn't I don't know if this was in the original of Queen of the Skies but you this is just kind of the base game that I've played there are bomb group rules where you you can play like for the whole group and, and there's a tons of other different things that you can add on to the game um, that, that, you know, that there's a lot of almost modular bits and pieces that you can add in at your leisure to up the difficulty level or just add more detail to it, which is which is really great for a solitaire game. Um, and I felt like this game was, whilst it is a simulation, I, I thought there was, you know, there was a good amount of game to it as well. Like I have, whilst a lot of it is die rolling on charts, the actual combat, um, you know, you've got some decisions to make about who you target and where, and, and, and you know, so that there's just, there are some important decisions to be made, but a lot of it is that the things happen to you, and it's trying to, you know, move your ammunition around, you know, if someone gets wounded, you've got to compensate for that, and what that's going to do to your actual target bombing, things like that. So there's a lot of stuff to take into consideration, but there's some meaningful choices as well as just rolling on a charts and tables. So it's not just a story that happens to you, which I enjoyed. I know um, Steve Dixon did a game called B29 Super Fortresses, and that was, it, it was this kind of a game, very similar, but it was B29s over Japan. And, you know, historically, they just didn't come a lot of, against a lot of fighter resistance. They fly, flew at such high altitudes, and it was late war, so the Japanese Air Force was broken. So that game was much more of a navigation simulation, which, whilst was historically accurate and had some really cool stuff to it, was maybe not as kind of exciting uh, as this one is. This has a lot of um, tense moments as the 109s. You get three 109s coming at you from 12 o'clock, and you're like, okay. That, that just that just didn't happen at all in B29. It just was much less fighter resistance. So you've got a realistic game there as well, but it just had a very different feel to it. But there you had to take care of, you know, altitude and pressurizing the cabin. But that was much more a game where your plane just breaks. You know, random events were this snaps, this breaks, your cabin depressurizes because they were just it was new technology at high altitudes and they were just testing it out and it you know they were there was a lot of mechanical failure in those planes this one a lot less random mechanical failure you have a basically a a 5% chance that something is going to happen to your plane randomly every zone you move into which is negligible basically if something does happen you know that makes it all the more oh my gosh i can't believe this happened and then you see what happened but it's not just like bits and pieces have fallen off your plane left, right, and center. The majority of the damage you'll take is from flak and from the heavy German resistance that you'll come across. So there was a, it was a bit more like your plane wasn't just falling off around you. It's not playing Galaxy Trucker, for example, where the bits and pieces just fall off. This is a real, um, really fun, you know, heavy combat-oriented game as well as a, a cool simulation. So I had, you can tell, I had a great time playing this. I love solitaire games, and I like ones that are both simple to play, but also have a great story. Something like, this is, it reminds me in a way of Silent Victory. It's a you know, very simple game, rolling through some charts, tells a great story, got some great tension, 
and has you know one or two really important decisions to make. This has a very similar feel to that game as well. So those two are kind of my... This, I would say, whilst the, there's a lot of charts and a lot of book to play through, and it can seem kind of daunting when you're reading it, really it's you roll weather, you roll uh, a random event thing, kind of, you know, if something breaks on your plane, and then it's, is there any fighter resistance, yes or no, then you attack them, they attack you, that's it. So whilst that it, it can seem daunting, it really boils down to very simple mechanics and a very easy to play game. So I would actually recommend this for any level of war gamer. You can be as as, as kind of deep and, and, and intense with this game as you want, as you get through all the crunchy historical stuff. Or if someone was fairly new to solo wargaming, this would be a fairly easy one to pick up. Don't be scared by the big books and, and long rules, because really, it's, it's really, really not that bad. And the rules are decently well written and well written out. Had a really, really easy time learning and playing this. Um, so I'm gonna, we'll take a look at the board and some of the pieces here real quick, and then we'll just wrap up afterwards. So here's kind of the setup I had on the table. Um, it's kind of... <laughs> The table creep for this one was actually a little bit larger than I was expecting, but really you just you just have this uh, main, which is a mounted board, which is cool, and you'll have this card over here, and there's like in the unboxing video you can see there's one of these for each of the different four or five planes you can you can fly in this game. Those are the two things that you'll have out if you're playing just a normal game. Now that is another uh, bifold card that you'll have out if you're doing the bombing group, but. I chose not to do that, just to kind of get used to the game in this kind of a individual way first. Um, this is uh, this is my B17F card. There's one of these for each of the planes, so you can use the same board, but you just interchange the middle bit. So that's nice. You don't have to have like a ton of different p uh, versions of this. They just switched that out, which I thought was really cool. Uh, but as you can see. So you've got your your bomber in the middle. If you ever get attacked by German fighters, you'll roll on a table, and they tell you, hey, which fighters come out? And there is a lot of fighters. Here's a baggie of fighters here, and the artwork's fantastic on these. And, you know, so there's some experimental fighters in here as well, but you got your classic ME210s, you've got 109s, and there's Fock Wolves in there as well. There's a ton of these in the game. And basically, the, the game will tell you, oh, okay, um, here's a, a Yonkers 88 is going to come out, and that's going to be what's attacking you. And they'll, t you know, you're rolling the table, it'll tell you it's coming in at 3 o'clock high. So this is going to come in, and it's going to attack you on your 3 o'clock side, and it's going to come from a high angle. So what that means is, is, for example, your ball gunner underneath the plane won't be able to attack him. He can shoot 3 o'clock, but he can't shoot high because he's on the bottom of the fuselage. So that that it limits the decisions, you know, it limits what you can and can't do with regards to the actual, you know, defensive fire that your um, plane can put out. So then what you do combat-wise is, you know, you have all of your different crew members up here, and they're manning various guns, and you can see they actually have the fields of fire listed on this card up here, so this tells you, oh, if it's... If it's three o'clock high, you know, this gun and this gun and this gun can fire. Um, so, and there's also, there's actually, and this is okay, the chart in the rule book is actually really, really good. You, you, because this tell, this has it done by kind of section of the plane. In the book, the chart just shows you, let's see if I can dig it out real quick. The chart's fantastic. Oh, it's actually right here. So it tells you, okay, uh, we're doing three o'clock high. These two guns can shoot. Top turret and right waist. Boom. It's as easy as that. So I'm going to find my little counters here. So I've got top turret and right waist. So I've got my right waist. And my top turret's actually over here because we were using it earlier. And these two. So if you had multiple planes out. So let's say. Let's get a more realistic plane. So if you've got a 109 coming in. From 130 high, well now you got some decisions to make. Because the top turret can target both of these, but you can only shoot at one per round of combat. So, or per, per wave of combat, I believe. So, you know, your top turret's got to make a decision. Does he target the, the Yonkers 88, or does he target the 109? Yonkers 88 might be easier to hit, but the 109 
has this three, it's gonna do more damage, more hits if it does attack you. So you're kind of like, okay, there's some decisions to be made here. You, it's easier to shoot him down because he's a bigger plane, but this guy's gonna do more damage, so you might want to focus fire him. So that, that, that there's some cool decisions to be made if you've got multiple planes out. So let's say we just can use both of these. We'll level both of these at the Yonkers 88, and then you'll roll to see, you know, you roll a D6, okay, that's a four. So that means that he's just an average pilot. If it's a one or two, he's green, so it's easier to shoot him down. If it's a five or six, he's an ace. Um, they're, they're, they're harder to shoot down, and it's easier for them to shoot you. And then you'll do your defensive fire, and you roll all of your attacks first, which I think is really cool. Because if, you, if one of the attacks shoots them down, you split the kill between every gun that fired against you. So it's your crew members are going to argue about who shot it down. You get half a kill if they if you split between the two, which means it's harder to kind of level. And by level, I mean if you, if one gunner gets five confirmed kills, he gets a permanent modifier to his attack rolls, which is really cool. It's just, it's there's like one of the few little leveling parts in this game. Maybe I wish there was a few more, and that's something that I would like to see, but. I think that's really, really neat. So you're going to roll 2d6. Fantastic roll. So the top turret scores an 11. That's going to be a hit almost every time. And then the right waist is going to attack. Rolls a 7. A 7 is a miss if it's unmodified. So we'll just say it's a miss for now. And then what you do is you then would roll on another table. And that table is going to determine if you shoot the thing down. Or, or, or exact. So a 10 is... Yeah. Uh, and, and then, so you draw, well, let's dig out the table here, why not? So then you're going to do damage, so we rolled hits with that uh, with that 11, we rolled a hit, so then you come over here, we'll roll on this table, let's say, he's a, he's a Yonkers 88, right? So we're going to roll on this table here, and you can see he's, he's one of the larger planes, so there's more options for him to be destroyed. So we'll roll a 2d6 on this table, and we roll a 4, not great. A 4 is FCA, and you just go down here, fight to damage, but continues attack. So you kind of peppered it and damage it a little bit. When it attacks, it's going to attack at a minus 1. Sometimes you can divert the aircraft or destroy them, and then they won't attack you. So, and here's my favorite part of the game. It, and I didn't think, I, I didn't even know this would be my favorite part of the game. It, and it's so, this is kind of goofy, but I loved these the fighter damage result tables you can completely ignore these if you want okay these are totally optional you can just roll on here you get your result and you'll see there's a little counter we roll fca fca here minus one we just stick them on there so when he attacks he's minus one very very simple but these detailed damage results are just so cool so on if we roll fca damage so we're going to roll 2d6 on here, and it tells you, and it's just pure flavor. It just tells you the kind of damage, you know, what happened as a result. So we rolled 2d6, got ourselves a 10. So we hit him in a nose fuselage, and we just did superficial damage. But it was still enough um, to, 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 you know, so nose fuselage, yeah. So nothing really happens, uh, but it's, it's enough to kind of divert him off course and cause him to have a negative one modifier for when he attacks. And then when he attacks, um, he's attacking on this chart here. So he's at, what do we say it was? He's three o'clock high. So he's gonna roll right here, and he's trying to get an eight through a 12 to hit. And he's rolling 2d6 as well. So he rolled a six, which is a miss. And there's some modifiers here. He's FCA, so it's minus one, so it's a five. So that's fantastic. So he misses, and then he's going to abort after, after that. If there was more waves, they might come back kind of thing. But, but there's, I, I just loved these detailed um, fighter destruction yeah, and damage charts. I thought those were really, really fun. I remember I shot, because the descriptions are so cool. So I shot one down in the left wing, I remember. Holes all over the wing, the panels are missing, the flaps and ailerons shredded and inoperative. B. So you're going to B. The pilot actually had to bail out. So the pilot bails out on a 1 through 2. He goes down, but the plane's killed. On 3 through 6, 
you see him, he's going to um, parachute out and bail out, and he's going to be okay. But he bailed out over the Atlantic, then you just... The story that those tell is so cool. And this is something that I love about this game. The stories are really awesome. You know, you'll be moving your guys around. If, if this guy goes down, then you have the option to move him over here, but then you've lost your ball gunner. So there's, there's some really neat stuff going on. I really, really enjoyed this game. I had a blast playing it, and we'll, let's go back for some final thoughts here. So that's a quick look at kind of the board and some of the bits and pieces. I just wanted to go over that briefly. We did the unboxing that has a lot of the details in there, but just kind of show you really what it's going to look like on the table and, and some of the different mechanics. Um, I had a blast playing this, and this will stay in my collection, and I will play this um, probably f uh, quite a lot. I know I'm going to make a lot of photocopies of some of these pieces of paper and play through this because it plays quickly and you know playing over that protracted um, tour of duty where you have to fly at minimum 25 missions. Yeah, you know, there's there's the cool story now you know do you make it through your tour or do you kind of get you know 18 missions in and then tragedy strikes. Yeah, you know, there's there's a lot of emotion that's going to get attached as I'm going to go through and kind of create names and backstories. So there's almost some role-playing stuff in there, which I also really love. Love uh, that, that kind of a, a cool, evocative story in a game like this. And, and like I said, this is a game where the more you put in, the more you get out as well. You can play it just because of a surface game, and it's really cool, and you'll have a great time with that. But if you want to go deeper and you know, create all these rich characters and name your plane, and you know, I imagine you know, what the nose art looks like, it just bring, brings it to life, and, and life is really what this game is about. It, this can be um, really as much of a game as you want it to be, and that's something I really enjoyed. I think Legion War Games have knocked this game out of the park, and I could not be happier to have this in my collection. So, that was a look at Target for today. There's the box. There's plenty of information on the playersaid.com about this. There's an interview, like I said, with Steve Dixon and Bob Best. I know they put a lot of effort into this game. Um, there's some unboxing video there as well. And um, look for a kind of a written review coming soon where we'll have also a ton of pictures and kind of I'll do a, a little bit of a story of kind of how the game went as well to show you some of the ups and downs that a game can give you. I've been Alexander from the Players Aid, and thank you very much for watching.